All right, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for joining. Let's get started with Virtual Agent Academy. Before we get into the main content today, just a quick reminder that uh, we do have a community site. Feel free to visit it. There you can explore best practices, up-to-date content, and lean on the experience of others to ask questions, give, uh, give answers to questions, and so forth. If watching us on YouTube and you like what you're seeing, go ahead and click that subscribe button below. You can also uh, like and comment on our video. Our channel does have lots of other um, uh, ServiceNow videos, as well as the past recordings of all our ServiceNow, uh, I'm sorry, Virtual Agent Academy videos. I also wanna give a shout out to other academies that we do. We do a mobile academy uh, every other Tuesday, alternating Tuesdays as today, as well as uh, an HR uh, SD Academy, which is on the last Tuesday or the last Tuesday or Thursday, last week uh, of every month. With that, let's get started with today's uh, topic. Today's topic is adding more flow to your virtual agent with Integration Hub. And with me today is our guest speaker of today, Travis Rogers. He is a senior solutions consultant and he is a expert on virtual agent. He's gonna talk about uh, Integration Hub uh, integrations with VA today. So with that, I'm going to kick it off to Travis. Travis, are you there? Awesome. Yeah, I'm here. Cool. Uh, feel free to take the screen share and take it away. Thanks so much. You're, uh, you're too kind with that expert note, but we'll see what I can do. All right, folks. Um, so really glad to be here and excited to speak with you all. Um, as Victor mentioned, I'm a solutions consultant with ServiceNow. So what that means is when I'm not doing fun sessions like this, I'm working with all of our customers to help them get the most out of the, the products and, and services that they're buying from ServiceNow. Um, uh, quick look through the agenda. Uh, we're gonna go through and, and briefly introduce what Flow Designer and Integration Hub are, for those who don't know. Uh, we're gonna talk through some examples of where using Integration Hub and Virtual Agent together really showed some, some outstanding uh, outcomes. Um, then we'll walk through two exercises. The first one is a quicker one where we're gonna add a uh, Twilio text uh, action to an existing topic. Um, so we'll be texting an on-call member from Virtual Agent. Uh, the second exercise, we're actually going to build a custom integration um, and then put it within Virtual Agent. So we're going to walk through all this pretty fast and, and let's get moving. Okay, perfect. Um, so first off, important to mention, um, in Quebec, we introduced the Flow Action Utility. Uh, this is a utility within the Virtual Agent Topic Builder where you are able to easily add flows, subflows, actions um, from Flow Designer into your Virtual Agent Topics. What that means is we're able to pull in those actions, pull in those automations, pull in those integrations, and quickly leverage them within your topics. So on the fly, you can have user conversations, get data that you need, respond with that data from those external systems, push that data where it needs to go. And from a user experience perspective, it becomes really, really seamless, uh, really low friction. Um, Quick note here uh, while we're talking through this, um, virtual agent is a pro capability. So you'd be entitled to that through uh, several of our pro suites. Um, Integration Hub has separate tier-based entitlements. Uh, we certainly recommend you speak with your account representative or account exec if you have any questions on specific licensing. All right, so um, Integration Hub and Flow Designer. For those who aren't familiar, Flow Designer is our workflow engine. It's where all the all the meat and all the power comes from when we're pushing different flows and, and systems through ServiceNow. It's a low code drag and drop uh, pill based utility where you can quickly create these, these logics and flows. Um, you, know, you can see some simple if then statements here. Um, tied with that is Integration Hub. Integration Hub is an extension of Flow Designer, but we're taking data from external systems or pushing it to those external systems as well as to other ServiceNow environments. Um, one of the beauties of Integration Hub here is that these technology that, that we build these spokes on, these actions, that's the same technology that we offer to you so that you can create your own actions, your own calls to third-party systems. And that's one of the things we're gonna walk through. Um, it's worth mentioning that we've got around a little bit over 150 um, spokes available in the ServiceNow store today. So each spoke is a different service. For example, um, you know, Okta and, and AWS, uh, you know, there, there's a lot out there. Um, I think we were around 100 at Paris. So I think, you know, in a year, we've got more than 50 new spokes as well as updated several existing spokes, and we continue to roll those out. Okay, so let's get, we're going to walk through some examples here. Um, 
I really wanted to do this to help the the audience understand a lot of the use cases and, and reasons why you would want to integrate um, integration hub with with virtual agent, right? What's what are the what are the reasons that that you can really benefit from and, and the outcomes that can come from that? So we're going to step through several examples. Um, in this first one, there was a low disk space alert, uh, as you can see here within Teams. That low disk space alert was sent to the on-call technician, let them know there's a high priority incident. And the short description based on the machine learning indicates that the logs, uh, we think it's because logs are abnormally large, but we got to fix that, fix that low disk space issue, excuse me. Um, so let's get this moving here. The technician is going to receive that. Let me make sure this is playing. There we go. Oh, well, that's all right. Uh, the technician <laughs> receives the, um, uh, notification here, they're going to choose to add that disk space to the impacted CI. What that's going to do is call this virtual agent topic, add disk space. Uh, as you can see in the conversation, an emergency change was created and then auto approved. Uh, we automatically allocated that disk space to the necessary server, uh, sent a success message back to the technician, and then now we're giving them that opportunity to update their work log with more notes. All, right, all these things are happening very quickly. Um, they're happening automatically. And in this case, we're calling the Google Persistent Disk Spoke. So this is one of the ServiceNow spokes in our store. Um, something to note here is, is this technician didn't have to go far to make sure that there was a temporary relief in place. Right? They made sure that there wasn't a disaster occurring. And now that technician can go and look into the logs. Next up, we're going to look at reporting a bug in JIRA. So we have a friendly employee who's noticed a problem with one of our software products, and they've come on in to tell us about it. The employee is going to say, I need to report a bug in our software. And based on the natural language understanding, we know that that is the create JIRA issue topic. We're going to go ahead and ask them for some more information around this. Uh, they'll maybe tell us this bug needs to be squashed. We're going to collect those details. Uh, now we're going to query out to JIRA and say, OK, what are the active JIRA projects? These represent our teams in this case. Uh, OK, it looks like it's going to internal tools. And there we go. We've created a JIRA issue, uh, sent it to the right team with some details on it. Right? Very quickly, that user was able to get that work where it needs to go. In this next example, uh, another IT one here, we have um, a user who's stuck in Citrix. They're not able, as you can see, their connection is interrupted here. They can't do much. So they've gone to virtual agent and they're going to say, I need to reset my Citrix session. Uh, the Citrix connector is going to query out and say, OK, we know what your active session is. We're going to go ahead and reset that. We'll send the reset command. And you can see on the user's window, that session is reloading and they're able to get back in. Um, this is a real scenario. We have a very large healthcare uh, provider who was dealing with 15 minute phone calls to their service desk to perform this very action. Um, so when they deploy this in virtual agent, you can imagine the time save both for their employees, their doctors who are on the fly and going from, from case to case and room to room, and the time save for their support teams as well. They can spend time working on more meaningful things. All right, let's pivot over to customer service. All right, how do we support our external customers, not just our internal ones? Um, in this case, we have a customer coming in and they're saying, hey, where's my order? We're gonna check the order status. Uh, we're, in this case, we're pulling that order back from Salesforce. We see their recent order information. Let's confirm this is the right one. Perfect, we've got the right order. We know that that order was shipped. So now we can reach out to FedEx and ask FedEx, hey, what's the shipping status? Uh, based on the API that FedEx has, we were able to pull back that information and display an estimated delivery for the user, as well as a link so they can track it on their own. Um, in this case, this FedEx book is one that we custom made. It's not in the ServiceNow store, but FedEx does make those APIs available. So I'll, I'll show you a few custom ones, and that's just to kind of get your, you know, get your creative juices flowing on different things you can do with this as well. All right, this next one is going to be looking at booking an appointment with a loan officer. So say you've got a pending loan with a company, maybe it's a mortgage loan, and you need to get in contact with someone. Come on in and let them know you want to book an appointment or however you want to say that. Let's collect some information, right? Maybe you want to update paperwork or cancel a loan, but in this case, we're just asking a question. We're able to identify who that loan representative is. Uh, look at their calendar, thanks to an Outlook integration, and see what their available time slots are. 
Let's go and select one of those time slots from their calendar. And great, now we've added that appointment to Arun's calendar so he can reach out to our customer, Garth, here. Um, we've also let that customer know that we'll be giving them a call. They don't need to do anything. So think here, we've, we've twice integrated with the Microsoft Exchange server spoke, both to pull Arun's calendar information and to post that, that calendar entry. Um, in this example, by the way, kind of think about how complicated this would be for your existing customers today. What are the hoops they need to jump through to achieve that same outcome? All right, customer complaints. Unfortunately, you know, we all get them. And so how can we help best address those customers? This customer comes in and they're gonna, they're gonna file a complaint about a product quality issue. There's gonna be a couple things happening here. Um, so they're gonna announce that their charging block isn't working. And we're gonna do a few things. Uh, first off, we're gonna use machine learning to understand what object is broken. Um, on top of that, we're looking at their purchase history to see what devices they've bought. And we know that they are still in warranty. Um, on top of that, we're also looking at our inventory system to say, okay, we know we've got a replacement. So we're offering that replacement back to the user instantly, uh, very low hassle, very low friction, much better experience for that user. And now they're more likely to come back and be a customer of ours again. All right, uh, let's look at supporting inter internal employees. Um, in this case, we have somebody who's gonna have a pay question. They wanna know how much is on their paycheck. I think it's a valid question. Now, of course, we're not storing, storing paycheck information in service now, but we know who is ADP. So we'll reach out to ADP using their APIs. We're going to call back and pull the five most recent paychecks. Once that user selects the date they want to dig into, we're able to, again, pull back more information. ADP provides all the information on that paycheck. And if the user wants a pay stub, we can pull that down too and, and provide a download link for the user. So again, think about the friction required if you want to get that from ADP today. Um, you know, what are the tools users need to go through, the, the, the hoops they have to jump through just to get this? Worth noting on that last slide that the ADP spoke was another custom one. It's not in our store. Um, all right, update workday info. So everyone moves and everyone has life changes. How do we support that? Somebody comes in and they want to change their address. Um, so we're going to pull back what their current address is. And we're going to say, nope, that's not right. Let's update it. And they're going to give us kind of a freehand new address, uh, maybe not formatted in the best way. So we're going to send that out to the USPS spoke. Um, it's another custom integration. And we'll say, hey, can you validate the address? And they pull back it in a fully formatted method. We've got that formatted address, and we're going to send it back to Workday. So Workday has the latest information. But we'll also let that employee know everything else should get this in a couple of hours. All right, there's a lot of power there. There's a lot of, there's a lot of moving parts and things happening. But from a user experience perspective, that was really easy. All right, two more examples and we'll get into the fun stuff. This is a setup topic. So more of our virtual agent admins would understand what's going on here. Um, when a user queries something in virtual agent, they maybe don't know how to, maybe their query doesn't find anything, right? And then we go to what's called a fallback topic. In this case, the user queried something and they did it in a language that's not their current session language. So as part of that fallback topic, we're gonna run their query through a language detection service. And that language detection service is going to let us know, hey, their query is not in the same language as their existing session. Uh, maybe we should let the user know, maybe if you rekey this in the session language that you're in, or if you switch your session language, we can support you better, right? Um, bit, of a, bit of a technical thing here, but from a user experience perspective, again, um, now they know, hey, you do support Spanish. I just need to flip a toggle over here. Um, or maybe you don't support the language they're coming in through. You can still let them know using that language translation service um, in a way that's easy for them to understand. And our last example, somebody comes on in and they, they want to hit your live agent queue, right? Skip all the, all the chat bots and whatnot, go straight to a human. Um, in this case, looks like everyone's sleeping. We are off hours for the day. Uh, we're going to let that employee know that, you know, uh, unfortunately, we're closed, but we can put an Outlook calendar reminder on their calendar so that we can so that they can reach back out at their convenience. Right? Instead of us calling them and maybe bothering their day, they're now reminded, oh, yeah, they're open. I can reach out and get what I need. 
Really simple example, but just kind of shows you the flexibility. All right, enough examples for the day. Let's get into the exercise. All right, I'd like to kind of start off by, um, let's do something simple, right? Um, we, we know what Virgil Agent is and we know high level what Flow Designer and Integration part, but let's kind of show you guys what it looks like. So in Flow Designer, we have our different flows, subflows and actions. Uh, these are gonna be a list of different things you can do. Um, I have a, an example flow pulled up here. In this workflow, each one of these is a separate action happening within Oracle IAM. Right? So we're, we're reaching out to Oracle to do these various activities and at the end of the day, all these are going to pull together to be one cohesive workflow. Um, we could break any one of these actions out and see more detail on it. Um, we could also copy this entire workflow in script format and expose it in any way we wanted to. Um, but for today's purpose, let's go ahead and look through and, and see how we add one of those actions to an existing um, conversation. So we have a topic here it's called who is on call, and it's rather simple. We just want to know who the on-call uh, technician is for the day. Um, and then we're going to give that employee a chance to send them a text message. So let me remove this object so we can add it back. Um, the way it works is we ask them what group to look for. Um, we look up who the on-call is for that assignment group, let them know who it is, and ask them if they want to send a text. Pretty straightforward. So let's use this action utility. Um, by the way, I am running Quebec patch 4. Uh, so everything that you see here should be available in Quebec. Let's add this action utility. We're going to give it a name. And our spoke is going to be Twilio. All right. You can see all these different actions that we have in the Twilio spoke. And they each give their own details as to what inputs and outputs are required, as well as what as well as what this spoke is for. What is it doing for us? All right, we're going to send an SMS. Um, a couple of details required, and I'll go ahead and key those in. There's a from string. This is going to be the phone number that this instance is sending our SMS from. Um, to string. This would normally be the business phone number or the cell phone number from our on-call member. Um, unfortunately, in the instance I'm using, I don't have admin rights and can't add that uh, cell phone number from here. So we're going to have to pretend like it was being pulled dynamically. I'm just going to key that number in manually. There we go. And then text message. Well, what do we want to say? Uh, we've got a string up here where we're saying, what message do you want to send? So let's go ahead and put that in. What message to send? Perfect. I think everything here looks good. Let's give it a quick save. All righty. Now, if I go to our service portal, I should probably publish this, right? All right, just to save time, I'm just going to demo this right here. Um, so let's go ahead and run through the test. Unfortunately, I didn't share my mobile screen here as well. I intended to, so you can see that this text actually went through. Uh, but I'm going to hope that you can take my word for it. Victor, while this is loading, do we want to field any Q&A questions? Um, yeah, so some of the questions have already been addressed. One question uh, that's out there by Katie. Uh, so with the integration, for example, Teams, can the virtual agent use the functions from teams like share screen, et cetera? I don't think that's an integration hub integration. I think that's more related to our Microsoft Teams integration. And I, I'm not sure about share screen, but I do know we do have integrations that allow, for example, an agent to reach out to a user, uh, the user of the incident. That's part of our ITSM integration. And then I'm, I know HR also has integrations with Teams as well to, to operate with uh, Microsoft Teams functions. Yeah, uh, that's that's uh, correct. And, and once you get in from, you know, if you've connected to a live agent and that live agent does need to share your screen, they can spin up a Teams meeting from that agent chat session, and yeah. then you can you do the necessary screen sharing. So you're not limited there. It, it wouldn't happen through this um, kind of technology that we're showing, uh, but it's definitely possible. 
Yeah, it's a, there's a button on the on the agent workspace. That's where, yeah, we're going off track, but just to briefly address that. Um, and then there's another question I can just answer directly. Um, I think there was one about, oh yeah, does this work with other third-party messenger apps such as Teams, Slack, others? Yes, it does. Awesome. All right, so we're gonna do this quickly. Who's on call? Uh, we found the team. It looks like Fred's on call for that team. Do we wanna send them an SMS? Yep, we do. Hey, yo, Fred, please, we need you. Right. Rather simple, um, but I think it, it helps share the message of, of how easy this was to add this integration. You can see now that this SMS was sent and we can actually view that in Flow Designer. Um, that prompt that came up is only coming to me because I'm a tester. Your end users would not see this. And here's a confirmation back to your user. The message was sent and Fred's gonna receive it soon. Uh, we will look at that later. Um, okay, so let's do the other big thing uh, that we wanna cover in this session. Let's build a custom integration, right? This is gonna be a little bit more technical, um, but the goal here is to show how easy it is to create your own actions and integrations with third-party systems. Um, I personally had never built an integration. I could barely spell API before uh, this past week. And I'm gonna be walking you guys through it. So I think that's a testament to how easy this is. All right, let's start off. We're gonna go into actions. We're gonna create a new action. Let's call this weather app bot two. I've already created one in here and I wanna make sure you guys know I'm being honest. All right, um, so what we're gonna use here is the open weather API. Open weather um, offers a free API. You just sign in and, and um, generate your own API key and it's pretty easy to use. See, they've got all sorts of different um, detail to, to use here. Um, but let's create some inputs. So with any action, uh, we're gonna need a couple of inputs that are required. In this case, we will do city. We're gonna look back and see what's the wind. What's the humidity and what's the temp. Awesome, all right, we've got those in. Uh, we should probably create some outputs as well. I know this content is a little dry um, and we're gonna be moving fast again, um, but I do hope that this is useful in kind of showing um, how this can be leveraged. All right, cool. So we've got these in. Um, now let's go ahead and create that integration point. Uh, first off, we need to say, okay, how are we going to integrate this? Uh, what kind of data is this going to be? Um, so we've got a lot of different methods for pulling in the integration here. You can see there's REST calls and XML and all sorts of things. Uh, let's do a REST call. And instead of using a credential and connection alias, which means a secure way of storing that, that um, credential set, we're just gonna define this in line for this situation. Uh, there's a base URL and a data path. Both of these are available on the API side here. Um, so if you were to look at, say, for example, this page, it would tell you all the information I'm about to put in. But I want to keep us um, timely. And I'm not able to paste from this site, so give me a sec. Copy-paste sometimes is funny in here. Our resource path is data. Weather. Awesome. Okay. There are two query parameters we're going to need as well. And again, those are on that same tab. They're defined. First one is going to be the city. This is the input that we are sending over as our query. The second is app ID. That is my API key that I generated as a member with them. Um, you can go create your own for free as well. Uh, you're welcome to steal mine, but I prefer you don't. Here we go. All right, let's give it a quick test. And you know, I messed something up earlier. I don't need all these as inputs. I'm so sorry, that was silly of me. All right, here we go.
Perfect. Okay, we see it ran. I don't see any errors coming back. And we can see that the payload shows a lot of weather data. So check this out. We've got a whole bunch of information coming from the service. So now how do we take that information and make it usable? That's the next question. All right, well, let's create a JSON parse. JSON parse is going to pull out all that information and put it into data pills so we can drag and drop it in our workflow here. JSON, JSON, there we go. A couple of things are going to be required. Uh, the JSON parse needs a sample of the data, so I'm going to paste that in. It also wants to know what that source data is going to be. Which is this response body. And if we do structure payload view, we can see the data as it came back. Awesome, great. Let's generate a target. You see the new data pills were created, so we can leverage those. Um, I know data pills may be going over some folks' heads. They definitely went over mine prior to, to learning quite a bit of this. Uh, I think you'll you'll pick it up quickly here. All right. So let's grab from these outputs now. We can tie these to the outputs of our action. So there's a couple to do. Root main temp. Is there a temperature? Root main humidity. We'll do root wind and speed for the wind speed. And then the city name is under uh, Forgive me, it's been a minute. Oh, it's name. There we go. A little tricky there. Awesome. Okay, let's test this again. We're going to send Dallas as our example out to that service. Perfect. So it ran. We can see some values coming back. We've got a city of Dallas was returned. Uh, looks like it's 39% humidity, uh, half a mile an hour wind, and super duper hot. Oh, that's right. Um, it looks like the weather service is sending this back as Kelvin. So now we need to convert that from Kelvin into Fahrenheit. Uh, I am in America, and we do use Fahrenheit. I cannot apologize for all of us. Um, I'm also not a mathematician, um, but we need to convert this into something that's usable. So let's grab a quick script element. Let's add that in here. If you like, Travis, you can just do a flat subtract 272. That gives you Celsius, which is... Um, slightly better. I could. You're very close. Oh, you actually. have the thought formula there. I already. do. Hey, never mind. Hey, I'm ready for it, man. <laughs> All right. So let's put an input variable here. Um, it's going to be Kelvin. And this value is going to be that temp value that we pulled out. I am very impressed that you knew that off the top of your head, though, Victor. That's pretty awesome. I actually work with the weather API on another project, so I know that problem. <laughs> there we go. All right, so now we're just going to do a quick conversion. Uh, we've brought in the Kelvin unit, and we're pulling in the temperature from our API call. And we're going to do a separate output named temp as well. All right. Um, let's do another quick test, make sure that everything's looking better. And for those of you still with me, I know we're right up at 30 minutes. I do appreciate you sticking with. Uh, we shouldn't be too much longer, but if you'd like to see the end result, you're welcome to hang around. All right, so this ran, everything's looking pretty good. Um, and we are still showing a temp of 305. Why may that be? Well, it is important when you're done to remap your outputs. So you remember we mapped that temperature output to the original export. Let's pull it from our script step instead. If I could drop it effectively, there we go. All right, once more, and I think we can call this one done. There we go, 89 degrees um, in this lovely Dallas weather. Um, okay, perfect. So let's go ahead and publish this. And we are nearly done, folks. 
So that has been published. I'm going to jump into virtual agent and we'll grab a different topic. Uh, this topic is WeatherBot. Very, very simple topic. As you can see, we ask the user what the city is and we send back their details. Let's go ahead and add that action. Call it get weather. This is under global. Uh, the way these spokes are grouped are by the application spoke that they're created in. I'm sorry, application um, scope that they're created in. You can see I've made a few of these, but WeatherBot 2 is the one we just created. And we have one input field, it is the city. So let's grab that from the what city. And I'm going to feel brave and go straight to publishing. And let's grab this in the portal. The other portal. <laughs> Now, if I say, what is the weather in New York? Because I've set up NLU and intent slot filling, what we should be doing is, oh, I forgot one important detail here. <laughs> this is the fun part about live demos, you guys. We uh, kind of miss things. I need to pull in those input fields to read back to the user. Um, so let's say the weather in city. There we go. The temperature is going to be our temp. Wind is wind, and humidity is humidity. Feeling better about that? Thanks for your patience. <laughs> Let's give that a quick refresh so we can run it again. There we go. All right, weather in Santa Clara, 86 degrees, uh, one mile an hour, and 60% humidity, All right? So uh, we went through a lot there, a lot of information, but hopefully that was informative to show how you can create your own actions, push and pull data from external systems, and ultimately um, you know, improve that, that user experience and, and the abilities of your virtual agent uh, to help your users get more done uh, with less. All right, Victor, I think that's all I got. Cool. Thanks, Travis. We do have a poll for those uh, coming up. Uh, by the way, that was a great demo. And yeah, the, we have a lot of out of, out of box spokes and actions. Marcel, feel free to uh, pull up the demo whenever, I'm uh, sorry, pull up the poll whenever you're ready while I just wrap this up here. We do have a lot of out of, out of box spokes and actions, hundreds uh, at least. And then like what you just saw with Travis's weather by example, you can always build your own and integrate that with um, virtual agent. The other thing to note, uh, you saw almost no scripting, at least certainly not on virtual agent side. So that's one of the, another great thing about Quebec is that you know we're constantly trying to uh, make our your conversation become a workflow and achieve your business outcomes with as less scripting, if not none, as possible. So thank you everyone for joining. And you know, sorry for running late, uh, but hopefully that was uh, really helpful. And uh, yeah, we will uh, post the recording of this in the coming weeks. Thank you for joining and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you again, everyone. Thanks so much, y'all.